What the fuck is this? What the fuck is that? You guys, can you hear this? What is going on? I'm being hey. scared. Ah, ah, ah. What it is, guys? It's your boy Blastmas HD. And today we are back to check out Backrooms informational video. And I just saw Backrooms. Uh, and it wasn't even something off of Pornhub this time. You know what I mean? I was just watching scary shit with you guys. And back and back rooms was what we ended up seeing. Uh, I'm a bit burpy. I've been drinking a lot of G Fuel. If you guys want to watch the original video, the link will be in the description down below me. Let's do this. Welcome to the Project TV31 Research and Development Team. In this short, informative video, you will be briefed on the required protocol in regard to Project KV-31, as well as receive an overview of future development plans. What is Project KV-31? Project KV-31 pertains to the study and development of the Async Low Proximity Magnetic Distortion System. For the sake of convenience, you may hear your peers refer to the project under any of the following titles. The Machine. The Door. The Back Rooms. Also, make sure to donate to GoFundMe. The link will be in the description down below to buy new equipment and to pay for internet in this house because there is none. The internet actually shut off earlier tonight for about two and a half hours. I didn't know if I was going to be able to record. But luckily enough, my, my editor Drew, he was able to fix the you know, fix some internet. But yeah, you know, make sure to donate to GoFundMe so that I can buy more cameras and all the other stuff. Cause otherwise, bruh, in the next two months, if the internet's not fixed, bruh, I'm probably gonna pl start playing poker for a living. And I don't wanna leave YouTube, but you know, there's no internet. The complex hallways. Unauthorized usage of these terms outside of the async research facility is strictly prohibited. The all threshold way. without guided I didn't supervision. Say all way, nigga. Regulation. They got drugs. Never all enter way. the complex alone. What's the complex? All expeditions are to be comprised of no fewer than three individuals. What the fuck? Oh, that wasn't too long ago. What the fuck is this? No. 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 Are we delivering food? Oh shit, we're Uber Eats. Hey, what's up guys? I got your uh I got your meatball subway sandwich. Uh minus the five year olds. Get it? Cause it's cause Subway always is with kids. Uh Yeah, I mean we're all dressed we're all dressed for COVID, so we don't have to take our shoes off, right? We're all dressed for COVID. Yeah, you know I mean, our masks. Yeah, but that was two weeks ago. Nothing yeah, gets through our masks. Yeah, you know I mean, we're pretty. We're, we're dude. We're our suits are tighter than the than the Ghostbusters. Our Ghostbuster suits are tighter than anything these guys could throw at us. Yeah, I brought extra forks and knives. Yeah, you know I mean, I brought the Parmesan cheese. That's why we got this suitcase. You know, the hose is for the uh, the hose is for the ranch dressing. Yeah, I mean, because the holes love ranch dressing. I mean, the holes has ranch dressing in it. What the hell is this? Why are these hallways so long? I, I don't like any of this. Um, oh, yeah, I don't like... Oh, I don't trust this shit. Guys, can you hear this? Hey, you guys want the food? We got your orders. We got your order coming up fresh. You guys want the food or... I mean, are we getting a tip for this? What the, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is that? You guys, can you hear this? What is going on? I'm being hey. scared. Ah, ah, ah. What? Guys. I'm getting scared. I don't like this. Oh. Did our did my friends guys. just get hit by a train? George. Did we just get hit by a train? Open. Oh! Yo, I I don't <laughs> Bro, where's Bob at? He's got the keys to Open. the truck! I don't have the car keys, bro. Where you at? Yo, that's bullshit, bro. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have, bruh, like an Uber Eats driver should never have to call an Uber for himself, man. You guys should come out, you guys gotta get out of here, quit playing. What the fuck, what, what's going on? Okay, I don't trust this. I don't like this. I don't like this. What the fuck is going on? Oh, that's not ominous. 
Is that a dead person? Is somebody shit on the floor? Can that be money? That's definitely poop. It's lots of it too. Bruh. I can tell somebody's been eating black licorice, bro. That's a lot of it. I've seen I've had I've seen that happen. I've had that happen. What the fuck is that? Can you not? Can this not be a jump scare? I thought this was an informational video! <laughs> what the fuck is that? Ho! Oh. Hold on now. Hold on now. Huh? I've... I don't like this. I don't like any of this. Hey, can some, I just want to borrow some sugar. Can somebody let me borrow their car? Please don't be anything. Please nothing come out of this. I don't like this. I don't like any of this. I'm scared. I don't like this. Oh man, my mama told me about sticking my, putting myself in the holes in the wall. Mm. No. Is that man? This looks like the inside of the goddamn the Blair Witch Project house. Oh, my niggas got an axe. Is that from Resident Evil? The village? These niggas. Oh, is that a? What's that? What's that? Hold on now. Hey, I ain't with that shit, huh? I the Gator ain't never been about that shit. Is that a house? Oh shit, they got electricity? What's that? What's that? What's that? I'll be quiet, we're not scared. We're not scared, we're okay, we're good. We're not scared. There's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing scary about this. Oh my god, the fact that we made it through that without getting our asses eaten, you know, and not even a good way, like, we're, we're really lucky to be here. But yeah, bro, like, dude, this food is cold by now, man, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start eating it myself. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and call an Uber, go home and beat my meat and eat some hot Cheetos, you know, like a real one. What's that? What's this? Is that an elevator? Turn up. Yeah, buddy. Where the homies at, though? Like, you know what I mean? My, the homies are weird as fuck for leaving me like that. Is that a bathroom? Bro, that's one of them unisex bathrooms. That's what's up. Oh, look. That's even a bigger glory hole, huh? I can fit my whole body through. Ha <laughs> ha. Sexually. You know what? I'm glad this wasn't as bad as it could have been. Uh, I don't trust this. You know what? Never mind. Maybe I just want to borrow some sugar. Is anybody home? Hello? Ah! 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 Run away! Retreat! Hey, look, I only stole a little bit, man. All right, it's not my fault. That was it? What the fuck? We just wanted to borrow some sugar. All right, y'all. Since we are already watching the back rooms, I figured we're going to check out Matt Pat's How to Survive the Back Rooms film theory because i don't know a whole lot of information about the any of this scp stuff matt pat super duper informational honestly one of the nicest people i've ever met in my life super duper cool dude make sure to go subscribe to him the link is going to be in the description down below to his channel the link is also going to be in the description down below to the guys who created the back rooms store the video they're only like 16 years old bro they just got like what like 15 million views in like a couple weeks congratulations you guys crazy crazy accomplishment uh, that just goes to show you the power behind 
using your film skills and combining that with something that's already popular, like SCP type lore on the internet. Bruh, it's the recipe for success. Hello internet, welcome to Film Theory, a show that's coming to you live from the back rooms. Why? Because I have no idea how to get out of here. Internet speed's good though, and the moist carpet water is, uh, eh, it's not the best I've ever had, but you know, it'll do. Wait, what was that noise? What the hell? Please don't. For all of you who are uninitiated, the monotone misery that is the back rooms began back in 2019 when this image was posted to a 4chan board dedicated to unsettling images. Just an ugly series of rooms, right? No big deal. Well, it came packaged with the following text. Quote, if you're not careful and you no clip out of reality in the wrong areas, you'll end up in the back rooms where it's nothing but the stink of old moist carpet, the madness of mono yellow. The end you guys want to hear something really fucking creepy? Now that I'm watching this, I realize that I had a nightmare about the back rooms when I was a child. Very, very young. I was about seven years old, and I went to sleep in my room watching Ninja Turtles. And I woke up, and I was in the sewers. And I'm trying to get out. I'm looking for my family, and I'm just like, I'm chasing them, chasing them. I'm just chasing down all these halls. But all the, all the halls in the sewers, they all connected into very identical looking hallways. So then I finally get out the sewers and then I'm in rooms that look exactly like the back rooms. And I started being chased by this fucking thing. It was such a mind fuck. I thought that I was in there for my entire lifetime. It felt like I was in there for 90 plus years running from that thing. And then I woke up after spending my whole life in there and I was in my room when I was seven years old. But yeah, I had a dream about this. That's creepy, right? endless background noise of fluorescent lights at maximum humbuzz and approximately 600 million square miles of randomly segmented empty rooms to be trapped in. God save you if you hear something wandering around nearby, because oh, it fuck. sure heard you. Oh, fuck. This post immediately got under people's skin. That endless series of mild annoyances that make you feel squicky and uncomfortable. Slightly wet socks, a faint electric buzz, harsh lighting, ugly wallpaper. In short, it is mundane horror. An oppressive monotony that slowly wears you down, mentally and physically. That miserable setting inspired lots of online artists to write their own independent creepypastas, even creating a short video game where you explore the space. But here in 2022, the back rooms have suddenly exploded in popularity thanks to a new series by VFX artist Kane Pixels, who's taken the basic concept and started to build a full-on world around Kane it. And you Pixels! know what that means? Kane's first Backrooms short film takes place in, uh, well, <laughs> already we hit a bit of a snag. The slate says July 4th, 1990 something, but the description of the video actually has September 23rd, 1996. Anyway, this is probably just because it was the first video in the series. Dates become much clearer as the world gets more and more developed. Things start off instantly when a cameraman, fittingly enough named Kane, tries to set up a wide shot and immediately falls through the ground. Literally no clipping through reality, only to wind up in the dank and deserted world full of humming fluorescent lights, carpeting, yellow walls, endless corridors, and monsters that, at least at first glance, remind me of walking tripods. Our cameraman wanders around trying no, to nigga, escape. That's e. Along the way, he finds some interesting landmarks hidden amongst the endless walls, but ultimately he's caught and presumably killed by the weird fungi monster it's short it's simple it's effective since the massive success of that first backrooms video kane has been busy expanding the world with other shorts like the third test first contact and missing persons as well as making the accompanying collateral.mov and march 11th 1990 archive.tar which are both hidden in the descriptions of the various videos from all of them we ultimately learned that the backrooms was an experiment designed by a company named async to solve space issues providing near limitless room for the world where it all went well, wrong though has to be seen. But what I want to focus on today isn't the where and the why, but rather the how. How to we survive. In the fourth video of the main series, we see that since accessing the back rooms in 1989, oh, missing persons reports have been Oswald. skyrocketing, as more and more people the fall out of reality Spider -Man. never to return. So, if that were you, you know what do you do? Oh, how do you navigate like a seemingly endless maze with limited resources long enough to potentially figure you out shit this yourself. world? You shit your pants every 25 minutes. I've done the research. I've lived the experience. You shit every 25 minutes when running from stuff. Weirdly enough, being funny in the hood is one of the hardest things. I don't know how I survived with how funny I am. I don't know how. Everyone wanted to fuck me up. 
<laughs> a lot of people succeeded. I was fast as a child. People wonder why I'm athletic and you know, all that fighting shit. I, because when you young, it's all about cardio. You know what I'm saying? And I got a lot of it where I grew up at. I was always running from people, but then these son of a bitches had the nerve to go and, and invent this one thing came out. What was it that started this? Oh yeah, bikes. Yeah, niggas started having bikes and I couldn't get away from them no more. You know what I mean? Niggas wouldn't get tired. Catch me and kick the shit out of my black. <laughs> a couple of times, I, I didn't think I was gonna wake back up. Them niggas did not stop kicking my ass once they started, man. They were like, bro, it took us a minute to catch you. I'm out of breath from running. You made me chase you. Now that I've caught you, I've brought all of my friends and we've all brought an ass whooping with us onto your ass. And they just, just spin like sometimes 10, a couple of times, 15, maybe yeah, once or twice, maybe even 20 minutes, just 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 all the whole time feet in my ass. Like a couple of times I woke up and I had to like drunkenly, you know what I mean? Like punch drunkenly, stumble home. Don't know how I got in the house. One minute be blacked out, next minute wake up in the bed. Like, nigga, how the fuck? But it hey, bag of hot Cheetos, nigga, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? I eat a bag of hot Cheetos, watch some Dragon Ball Z anime from back in the day, nigga. I ain't fuck. I was like, yeah, I'ma see you niggas again. I'm lying. I ran when I saw him again too. Cause there's like 19 of the motherfuckers. I'm like, what did I even do? Guess what got me jumped by that many people like three times by the same group. They chased me in the forest and tried to kill me because that nigga was roasting me because I, I, I was broke. And so all my clothes was dirty and my shoes had holes in it. So I started roasting him back. But since I was so used to getting roasted because I was always broke as a kid, I never had anything nice or expensive, which is why I surround myself with that stuff as an adult. I roasted that nigga back because I was, I was so used to like getting roasted that I started roasting people back and I got good at it. So I roasted that nigga back, made all of his friends laugh at him. Yeah, that nigga kid, they kicked the shit out of me for a while after that. And then a couple years later, we became friends. The fuck? Nigga's name was Charles. I don't know. I think it was a fact that they had nearly killed me and I wasn't, you know what I mean? I don't know, like, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like, that nigga, he punked me a bunch of times after that. I ain't gonna lie. I was still scared of that nigga. Cause like, he was willing to have me jumped. And I tried fighting that nigga one-on-one -on -one and he beat my ass too. He, he, he fucked me up, so. And then let all of his friends jump me after he beat me up. I'm like, come on, like, nigga, like. How do you avoid an unknown monster that roams the halls? What mistakes do we see Kane make in his exploration of the back rooms? And what could we do better? Pay attention, friends, because today I have the definitive list of six tactics that might just save your life the next time you no-clip out of reality into an ugly yellow nightmare. In Collateral.mov, we learned that in 1989, tests by the Async Foundation caused a massive earthquake that took place in the Santa Cruz Mountains. So, is the facility in the mountains? Are you at the top of a mountain and need to go down? Are you under the mountain? and you need to go up? Are you in the upside down and you need to get un-upside downed? It's unclear at best. All we know is that in one moment we were filming with friends and in the next we're here. So once you land in the back rooms, the first thing that you need to do is take the advice of the US Forest Service, which suggests that when you get lost in the woods or a cave, you do not move at all unless you have a specific reason to take a step. Basically, you sit down, you don't panic, you assess the situation and the tools that you have at your disposal, and you stay where you are. You ended up at this location for a reason. Maybe this is an entry point for other people and someone else will know clip in. Maybe people will wind up looking for you and by moving you throw off their tracking. In short, by panicking, running, and moving forward without a clear plan of attack, you are only succeeding in getting yourself more and oh, more no. lost. Eventually though, you will need to move. And this was Kane's first mistake. He had no plan. He just wandered aimlessly and headed towards whatever looked interesting. Oh, this said, meant that when he started getting chased by the back rooms as monster, he had no idea of his surroundings and wound up meeting a dead end. Figuratively. Or I, I guess it would be literal. Huh. Anyway, proper grammar aside, we're in a repetitive maze, we're looking for an exit, and we need a way to track our movements. And for that, we need to use a maze-solving algorithm, an automated strategic way for solving the maze with no prior knowledge of it. Our first strategy should be using the wall follower technique, also known as the right hand rule. This is one that I think a lot of people have heard of, but maybe don't understand the actual mechanics of. Basically, it's a tried and true maze escaping method that involves running your right hand along a wall while you navigate the maze. You see, mazes, in their simplest terms, are just shapes that you're trapped inside. So you, as 
does the maze solver need to find the outermost wall and the hole that's presumably in it? Many mazes are what's known as simply connected, i.e. all the walls are connected together to the maze's outer boundary. As such, if you were to unwind the maze, it basically amounts to one big circle with an entrance hole and an exit hole. So by keeping your hand locked to one wall and following it all the way through, you follow the outline of that circular path and you either find the exit, congratulations, you survive, or you wind up looping back to where you first started. Well, that's certainly not ideal, it is helpful, because it tells us that the maze isn't simply constructed, but rather it's what's known as a disjoint maze, one where the walls aren't always connected to the outer boundary. In the video First Contact, we actually get confirmation that this is what we're dealing with with the back rooms. We see a map that confirms that the back rooms is a disjoint maze. Notice that there are multiple chunks of wall here that don't seem to connect to the outside line, but just because we're in a more complicated maze doesn't mean that we're out of options. First and foremost, if Kane was able to bring his camera with him into the back rooms, then his other belongings have no clipped with him as well, specifically things on his body like keys and clothes. And this immediately puts us at a huge advantage. If you have something like keys or a belt, you should immediately mark your starting location on the wall, and then run those keys or belts or whatever against the wall to leave indentations or markings. You can scuff the walls with your shoes, you can peel the wallpaper, you can pull a Hansel and Gretel and rip pieces of your clothing off to use as breadcrumbs, you can write arrows and notes to yourself on the walls, which we know can be done since there are markings throughout the maze left by other people. This way, when our right-hand method results in us doubling back to where we began, we have a clear indication of which walls we followed and which ones we didn't. And if the walls do happen to be somehow supernatural and can't be marked by you, then the ceiling tiles are another option here. You see, the ceilings of the back rooms appear to be a specific type known as a drop ceiling, or suspended ceiling, which is common in office environments where lightweight foam panels hang a few inches below the main structural ceiling, hiding things like wires and support beams. By throwing a shoe to break or knock down tiles, you're able to mark your progress in all the areas that you've been. Bit by bit, you eliminate the hallways that you've tracked and systematically work your way to the outer edges of the maze. One other strategy to help with this in a disjoint maze setup like the back rooms is the pledge algorithm. Here, you travel in a set direction. Let's say you walk forward until you hit an obstacle. From there, you put your right hand on the wall and you start walking around the obstacle, counting the angles that you're turning. Clockwise turns are positive, counterclockwise turns are negative. Once you start facing the original direction that you're meant to move again, and the sum of your turns is zero, you leave the obstacle and you continue moving in your original direction. This ultimately gets you off the disjoints faster, leading you to the outer wall of the maze and eventually to the exit. Right now, all you seasoned back rumors are probably laughing at me and saying, silly Mad Pat, the back rooms are an endless void of death and despair that'll cause you to slowly lose your mind. To which I say, joke's on you, I lost my mind years ago. I'm not gonna let a funky smell and series of yellow rooms defeat me. Plus, I'm not convinced that this thing is actually infinite or unpredictable. Like I said, in this new Kane Pixel series, we see a map of the place. We also see async employees able to walk through the back rooms using a long red line, presumably as a way to lead them back to the entrance door. So all of that is just trying our best to find an exit, but there's still one more important variable here that we have to consider. The monster that's looking to rip our body in half Hell to no. use as human nunchucks. And oh this God. is again where a systematic approach to the hey. will be our first line of defense. The last thing that we want is to wind up in a dead end. And the best thing that we can do to avoid that is to use the confusing layout to our advantage. Ideally, we're able to lead this monster to a disjoint, a section of the maze that we already know loops back around on itself. This gives us two simultaneous benefits. First and most importantly, we don't get lost while still allowing us to use the narrow hallways and looping structure to escape the sight lines of the monster. Damn. Instead of taking a straight path where the creature can easily track and follow us, you instead make tight turns in an effort to make yourself disappear behind a series of walls as quickly as possible. This sequence of repeated doors that Kane has chased through provides an excellent example. By dodging and weaving instead of taking a straight path, he should be able to make himself disappear fairly quickly. The other benefit of using a big disjoint to escape this thing, though, is that we can then try to loop back around behind the monster to follow it. Obviously, your what? first priority is going to be avoiding this thing until you, you have a better sense of what it is since? and what it can do, but by leading it to a chunk of maze that you know will allow you to double back around it, you'll be able to sneakily gather information no! much more quickly. And who knows, these things presumably know the layout of the maze, so by following them, they may be able to provide another resource for finding the way out. I suppose I you could try to fight it, or try Fuck to trap that. it with a rope, or nope. drag it into a null zone, which you wouldn't even know about, but honestly, is confronting this thing actually going to no. help you survive? Probably no. not. Focus on escape and defense as your first priority. Run Once away. all that's settled, you've created a system that actually Run, works, bitch. you've learned that the walls don't magically change every 30 minutes, start grabbing whatever you can find. In the back rooms video, Kane blatantly ignores a lot of potentially useful supplies. For instance, that ladder right there that's used to get
get into the crawl space, grab it and carry it around. Even better, try to use it to get into the ceiling grid. Remember what I said about suspended ceilings? That it hangs below what the real top of the room is? Well, often, walls only go as high as the dropped ceiling height. As such, once you're in the ceiling, you're not only hidden from the ground-based monsters, but you also have a wide open path to the outer edge of the maze, unobstructed by any walls. Heck, you might even be able to find some electrical wires from the fluorescent lights that you can then follow, which again, should presumably be leading you out of the facility. Also, if you come across some rope in a dumpster, you don't walk past it. You check out what's inside the dumpster, and you take the rope. You take what the world gives you because you yep. might not ever come across it again. The That's same real. goes for any chair legs that could be used for self-defense, or heck, something inside of the filing cabinets that you walk past. Remember, you are stuck in a maze. Everything can have multiple uses. For instance, when Kane's walking up the fire escape, his camera catches a glimpse of a hole in the ceiling that's created by an air duct. Air ducts, as you can probably guess, tend to lead to the outside of buildings. So again, having that ladder or rope might have helped him to investigate that. When he comes across a cavernous section of the back rooms, those same items could have helped him get across the chasm to the other side. If he had a ladder, he could have dropped down into the apartment area that we see here, allowing him to more efficiently look for food and water. Sure, nothing might come of any of these options, but again, it's more likely to work than just wandering around aimlessly surrounded by repetitive yellow wallpaper. Last, but certainly not least, don't take any one-way exits unless you absolutely have to. While running away from the monster, Kane ends up sprinting deep into the catacombs only to find a hole that he jumps down into. It was the right decision in the moment because he was being chased, but had he just found the hole, this would have left him vulnerable, because it's a decision that he can't easily reverse. Again, document on the walls with your keys or whatever that the hole is this way, but only come back to it if nothing else seems to be working. Again, the last thing you want to do is to corner yourself. So, there you have it, friends. How to survive the back rooms in six easy steps. One, have a maze-solving strategy. Two, mark your path using whatever's on you. Three, equip yourself with anything and everything that you can find. Four, ceilings, wires, and air ducts are gonna be your friend. Five, never take a one-way path. Always have at least two ways out. And six, if you absolutely have to, use the disjointed, confusing layout defensively when being attacked. Using all of those tactics, you have the best chance possible of escaping this nightmare scenario. And hey, look on the bright side. If you ever get thirsty, you have as much moist carpet water to drink as you could possibly want. But hey, oh. it's February, and if there's anything scarier than the back rooms, it's Valentine's Day. But Ain't fear not, it. my friends, because I've got the definitive strategy for surviving Valentine's Day in one easy step, getting a gift from our sponsor for today's episode, Established Titles. Done and done, theorists. See, here's the thing. Established Titles is just a fun gift to give someone who's nerdy and loves a little bit of fantasy in their lives. Through Established Titles, you can buy a small piece of land in Scotland, which, thanks to an old Scottish custom, means that you or the person you're buying the- All right, so we're about to find some of them videos that he was talking about. Couple, there has been a rather strong earthquake Hello. in Northern Couple. California, so strong, in fact, that it has, among other things, knocked out all the power, uh, or much of the power, at Candlestick Park, where the third game of the World Series was being played. But in the overall scheme of things, that may be the very least of things that has happened today. You can see some video there. I gather that's live video of Candlestick Park. And we, we are feeling a shock right now. And that shaking in your picture is being amplified it by the... It feels like God is uh, fucking... Tremor like that it's just gone so much the top of the vibration stadium. And we are the right there taking the bases the, off. The, the, uh, the 841 East 541. And we All just felt it out here. We're at ground level. Smells like hot dog water. This is a live and used shot Magnum condom our wrappers. Our affiliate, our own and uh, station in San Francisco, you know, KGO. And you so, can see that there are I don't know who the Lord is giving the, bi giving the holy business to, but, but he's wrecking her vagina. That, uh, what we're you know, uh, here is Dan Rather here at Channel 6 News, in on more at 11. We of our affiliate in San Francisco, KGO, because a great deal of the information that is coming is more readily accessible to them than it is to us. Uh, and they have reporters reporting live from around the entire Bay Area region. Nigga, what are y'all doing? Part of the problem, Why are they looting? Uh, yes, yes. Store water, prepare for aftershock, prepare for three days of no services. You got 90 minutes of light left. You better make use of your time. I don't know who the Lord is giving the business to, but I'll tell you, that bitch is pregnant now. That bitch is pregnant tonight. over here in Oakland. The electricity is out in much of the city, and we have a bad freeway collapse. It's that ramp of the Nimitz freeway that goes from Cypress to Bay Bridge, about a six or seven block stretch of it. Show your pussy, bitch! They are pulling bodies out. No, well, no, put the lower ramp. 
There were just that's the woman that looks like she had good credit back on, on, back on camera. There are a lot of Bro, she looks like she's got good credit. Baby girl, I'm going to get a car in her name. South in the Santa Cruz Mountains along the San Andreas Fault. Baby girl, come back. I got food stamps. Very difficult time huh? getting any information out of that area tonight. We all now, know that these hoes love food stamp dick. In Santa Cruz now to give us uh, get back some notion of what's happened. This is our first report. Tony? Hey, this town of 40,000 is about uh, 10 miles no. from the epicenter of the earthquake. Uh -huh. You would expect the damage to be severe here, and it is. No. The downtown okay, what about section of Santa Cruz is basically dick. gone. <laughs> All the old... Uh, okay, miss, 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 I know, I know. You don't, buildings have collapsed. you don't suck this food stamp This is a department penis. store called Ford's. What about it collapsed this? The second penis. store, the second story... The, into the first broke floor, trapping shit. several people inside. At least three people are known to have died here on the mall. Perhaps what? A 12 Is there something moving in there? Why does it look like teeth? Authorities do not have a, a final fatality figure. Many, many other people are in. Oh no, that mannequin died. Several hours. Power company says what the fuck happened? Somebody got beat the fuck up. Alright, this is the next video. This will complete the entire series. Is something going to happen? I feel like a jump scare is going to hit us. I'm low-key paranoid, kind of scared. Um, can we not get a jump scare? I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to comment, like, and or subscribe. You know what I'm saying? It's your boy, Blasphemous HD. Let me know in the description down below if y'all want me to just stand up and nunchuck while I do my videos. Cause honestly, like it, it feels nice. Get my exercise in, you know? <laughs> also make sure to donate to the GoFundMe. All of it, it goes towards equipment and all of that stuff. I would live stream in order to raise money, but I don't have internet. My internet is not good enough. My internet is just good enough to watch videos here. Twism.